Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of the ovary. So this is a pig ovary, which is very useful in showing us the anatomy and physiology of the mammalian ovary, even if it's not perfectly similar to the human ovary. So the ovary is responsible for several functions, chief of which is to produce eggs for reproduction. This takes place over several steps. First is oogenesis, which refers to the production of gametes during fetal development before the organism is born. Second is the maturation of the oocyte, which takes place over the female's lifetime. After an oocyte is mature, then comes ovulation, where the mature oocyte is expelled from the ovary. After this, the oocyte enters the oviduct, in the case of pigs, where it is fertilized. In humans, the oocyte enters the fallopian tube, where it is similarly fertilized by sperm. The embryo then implants and develops in the uterus, in humans, and in the uterine horn, in pigs. And the circle of life begins. The ovary also has another endocrine function. It secretes the female sex steroid hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Now, with that brief introduction covered, let's take a look at the external anatomy. So the tissue covering the outside of the ovary this thin membrane we can see here is called the germinal epithelium. This is a thin membrane of epithelial cells that basically covers the ovary like this and protects it in this little sac. Now, the main body of the ovary here, this grape-like structure, is called the stroma. You can see these bumps on the surface here. And these are actually the developing follicles that are pressing up against the ovary wall. We'll discuss this more soon. Also, this tube-like structure that you see here is the oviduct, which is where fertilization takes place. Now let's get into the internal anatomy. I'm going to cut the ovary longitudinally. So hold it steady, then take a scalpel and just cut the stroma straight in half down the midline, then pry the sides apart. So here, the outer layer of the ovary is called the cortex, which contains the follicles that we'll talk about soon. The inner layer here is called the medulla, and it's mostly neurovascular, which means it contains nerves and blood vessels. Here at the very end is the hilum, and this is the site of a ligament, as you can see here that connects the ovary with the uterus. The hilum also serves as the entry point for blood vessels. Now let's talk about the physiology. So the maturation of the oocyte and secretion of the hormones take place in a single structure, the follicle. So basically, the ovaries contain all the developing eggs the female will ever have at birth. In humans, the ovaries contain around 2-4 to 4 million eggs at birth, but only a few, around 300, are ovulated during the woman's lifetime. All the other eggs degenerate at some point in their development, so that very few remain by the time the woman reaches 50 and hits menopause. Each of these eggs is encased in a structure called a follicle, which originally consists of a single layer of cells. So you can see some of the follicles here. 
So these yellow circles right here along the edges. And these are actually developed follicles called the corpus luteum. And we'll talk about them in detail later. So in each ovulatory cycle, around 15 to 20 of these eggs start maturing. And as they mature, the follicle surrounding them becomes larger as the follicular cells divide and the follicle is filled with fluid as the follicular cells start secreting fluid. In pigs, this process continues for 15 to 20 eggs until the egg is fully matured. So you can see how there are multiple developed follicles in the ovary. In humans, however, only one follicle, the dominant follicle, continues to develop in each ovulatory cycle. All the other eggs that had started developing kill themselves off in a process called atresia. This is why humans usually only have one child, while pigs have litters of a dozen or more. However, human ovaries may sometimes release two eggs in an ovulatory cycle, resulting in fraternal twins. So the egg is released from the ovary when it is matured. Enzymes degrade the very thin layer between the expanded follicle and the ovary wall, and the follicle ruptures, releasing the mature egg. So after the egg is released from the ovary, it's taken up by the fallopian tube, in the case of humans, and this oviduct, in the case of pigs. So the egg will just be released into the surrounding space, and this oviduct will take it up. There, it's fertilized by the sperm and completes its final round of development, forming an embryo. This embryo then travels to implant itself in the uterus, in the case of humans, and in the uterine horn, in the case of pigs. And after the embryo develops, the baby is ready to be born. Now, after ovulation, the follicle, now without an egg, differentiates into a corpus luteum. The corpus luteum literally means yellow body. And you can see these are all corpus luteum and they do look yellow. So here in the middle of some of these corpus luteum, you can see the fluid filled cavity where the egg would have been before the follicle ruptured. So you can see a few more. So this specimen was probably collected right after ovulation, and that's why most of the follicles are corpus luteum instead of developing follicles. So the corpus luteum functions in producing hormones. It produces a massive amount of progesterone and estrogen. The hormone secreted by the corpus luteum, especially progesterone, is essential for establishing and maintaining pregnancy if the egg is fertilized. However, if the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum degenerates. This signals menstruation and the beginning of a new ovulatory cycle. All right, that's the end of the ovary dissection. Thank you for watching. Here's a fun fact to send you on your way. All clownfish are male at birth, but can change their sex during their lifetime if necessary. Because all clownfish are born with mature testes and immature ovaries, by developing its ovaries, the clownfish can change its sex to female. This usually happens when the alpha female in a school of clownfish dies and another is needed to take its place. Thanks for watching! Please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.